They call it the Big Egg, the latest high-tech construction in this, the most modern city in the world. The Tokyo Dome, the setting for Mike Tyson's first professional fight outside the United States. Welcome. I'm at ringside, right at the heart of this futuristic stadium, and stretching behind me the triple-decker construction into which I've packed 55,000 people here to witness Mike Tyson's latest defense of the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. The challenger, the former WBA title holder, Tony TNT Tubbs. Ever since the young champion arrived in Tokyo, Tyson mania has swept across the country. Everybody is talking about him. Giant. He is a symbol of the United States. But even the strongest boxer in the world cannot match the bulk of Japan's sumo giants. Tyson playfully merges up to the great Kanashiki, but he's outweighed by over 300 pounds. And indeed, he'll be giving weight away to Tony Tubbs, a very accomplished boxer at his best, but in recent fights he's been carrying too much weight, and his commitment has been in question. He's convinced it's different this time. I know physically I'm in shape. 230 is my weight. 229, 228 is a plus. But I'll be 230 and hard. Physically, you'll be seeing the new Tony Tubbs. When I step in the ring, everyone say, wow, look at that cat. You know, and the thing about it, once I start putting the moves down on Mike Tyson, I'm going to change, you know what, this fight might not be harder as y'all think it's going to be. Because Mike Tyson is, 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 is only good for what he can hit. For Tubbs, a chance of redemption is nigh, but there are new stakes. If he fails to enter the ring with his mind and body fully prepared for Tyson, it could be hazardous to his health. I know right now that I am one of the best heavyweights in the world. I can box better than any of them, and I, I ain't taking no back seats to none of them. I'm not even taking them back seat to Mike Tyson. Well, the fight is minutes away, and with me is the former world lightweight champion, Jim Watt. What about this setting, Jim? I've never seen anything quite like it in my life, Dickie. Probably because there is nothing quite like it. And the Japanese people have really come out in their hordes to make this the event we knew it would be. I should think Mark Tyson's very impatient to go because he's been in this country for a month and his first fight outside the United States as a professional. Well, Mike Tyson has a perfect attitude for a fighter, a perfect temperament. And uh, boxing away from home, I don't think will trouble him in the least. Actually, spending a month away from home has probably made him even more aggressive than usual, if that's possible. So I don't think it will adversely affect his performance at all. Of course, since we last saw him fight, he's a married man and he's a prospective father now. Do you think this will make a difference? Will it soften him up? I don't think so. We have been told several times that there are two sides to Mike Tyson, although we only see the aggressive side. But he has said he wants to use his position as champion to help underprivileged kids and to do good work. So now he has a mother-in-law, I hardly think that's going to make him more <laughs> lovable. What about Tony T.A.T. Tubbs? Uh, he's had weight problems in the last uh, few fights and his commitment has been in question. What about now? Well, Tony Tubbs is an excellent fighter. Uh, he has a, a good chin, plenty of talent. His courage has never been in question. OK, sometimes he's overweight. But we have a situation here as we've had in the past where a champion is totally dominating the division. So although I can't give Tubbs a realistic chance of victory, but to sound chin, his ability and his courage, I think he can pose Tyson a few problems and at least give us a good show today. Soon Tubbs' confidence will be severely tested. Now in this vast auditorium, 55,000 spectators await the entry of the two fighters. Ringside as always, Jim Watt and Reg Guthridge. And there's the challenger Tony Tubbs. Been a bit of criticism, obviously, about his weight. 238 pounds. So then Tubbs' career record then, he's only lost one of 25, and that was a very close one that ITV covered with Tim Witherspoon. And one judge actually gave it a draw on that one, and he stopped 15. So there he is, no dressing gown. The old throwback to the bare knuckle fighter, unbeaten now in 33, 33 fights, and he stopped 29 of them. Fifth defense now, one against Trevor Burpick, of course, and then the unification against Tony Tucker. 
and uh, he really is sweating profusely already, isn't he? He works out so hard in the dressing room. And I tell you, he's having a hard fight getting into the ring, it would look like Tyson. I mean, the Japanese have made such a hero of him, and obviously they're expecting heroism from him, but it, it might not be necessary. On the other hand, uh, Tubbs was picked by the Japanese promoters as a man who's liable to go a long way, if not the distance in this fight. They didn't want a repeat of the George Foreman and Joe Roman fight that took place here back in 73 that only went one round, and they thought Tubbs had the durability. Takes it all in his stride, doesn't he, Tyson? Just another night's work for him. He gives that impression anyway, but there's no doubt that he's got a bit of nervousness in there somewhere. Maybe on his own performance rather than worried about the opposition. And then when you see the tail of the tape, well, he's obviously got to give away a few years there, Tony Tubbs, and uh, I can't believe that waist measurement of his. I think he's put it on quite a bit since then. But uh, he's got the advantage anyway of being 6-4 against 5-11. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing his boxing trunks and weighing 238 and one quarter pounds with a professional record of 24 victories, 15 by knockout, and only one defeat from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the second ranked heavyweight in the world and a former heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tony TNT And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing 216 and one quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Customato. He brings a professional record of 33 victories without a loss, 29 KOs, including 25 KOs in five rounds or less and 15 in the first round alone. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undisputed, the undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson! Well, a great reception for Tyson. I mean, they've almost thought it was a return of the old movie star Godzilla, the way they've treated this fellow here, and uh, he's been totally overwhelmed by it. Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day, and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an off and all luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. So, referee Arthur McCanty there. Public could hear what he was saying. He wishes them both luck. They both know the rules. And certainly McCanty does. And I tell you, it's, uh, well, it's a happy night in many ways for my co-commodator here today, uh, Jim Watt, because it was Arthur McCanty who refereed uh, his contest when he won the championship of the world, and uh, strange enough, when he lost it to Alex Aguilo, who was also here at ringside. So there you are. All the dignitaries are finished now, and uh, the Muhammad Ali's are at ringside, Sugar Ray Leonard's. So it's, it's a great event now. Are we to worry about the weight of Tony Tubbs or not? Because he's always been a porky-looking fighter. He started off at about 212 pounds when he turned pro and he went up to 244 at one time when he lost to Witherspoon, the only defeat. But for a big man, he's got fast hands. It's just a question now whether the, the durability can stay in there with this uh, absolute murderous punch at Tyson. 15 in the first round. Tubbs is the WBA number two, and this is for both the WBC and WBA championship, not for the IBF, as it's not over the 15-round course. And there's some silly talk by the IBF that they might strip Tyson. Well, they'd lose a bit of credibility with me if they do that. Yeah. 
Jim, we've seen quite a bit of Tubbs. I mean, he, for a big man, he can move. Yeah, Tubbs is a very smart boxer, very talented. He's the type of fighter to give Tyson trouble. And strangely enough, this is about the quietest uh, first half minute of a fight we've seen Tyson in. Normally, it really comes out bombing, but he seems to have settled down here. Maybe he realises this fight could go a few rounds. Uh, I don't know. Well, whatever happens now, certainly I was got the impression that T Tubbs has been sold it a bit short. It's true he'd let himself down a few times, but he, you can't do more than keep winning except for the Witherspoon one. But that was the first right hand now that's gotten in from Tyson. Now, is this a strong chin that we talk about uh, of Tubbs going to be standing up to this sort of stuff? Well, remember that uh, two others, Tony Tucker and Bone Crusher Smith, have stayed the course. obviously Tubbs planned him he's going to try and do a bit of uh, outsmarting I mean that is that's his move he may not wish to well he'd like to out punch Tyson but I think he's going to try and do it with being clever yeah I think he has to try to score at long range and just uh, stop Tyson from working up close it's pointless trying to trade the uh, power with Mike Tyson but uh, if he can pin him on the jab he's landed a couple of jabs and a couple of nice left hooks already Tubbs and uh, any time Tyson's got close he's tied him up Well, as Tubbs was saying, he's, he's only as good as what he can hit. So you got the usual whispering in the corner there uh, by uh, Kevin Rooney. And as I've often said, they, they have numbers that they work out for various punch routines, as it were. And instead of him saying left hook, right hook, etc., whatever they've practiced, he just gives them a number and Tyson remembers them. That's Odell Hadley then working with Tubbs. Second down, second down. So into the second round, it's always a bit of a relief, Jim, to get that first one over, isn't it? The people getting their money's with, and uh, really they're going to—they deserve it because you know, in yen it's about uh, what a hundred thousand uh, yen to a ringside seat. I make that about four hundred and thirty-five pounds, so they want something for their money. It's going to be the stalking routine, as always, with Mike Tyson. I think probably the Japanese, if not uh, our viewers, Jim, are a bit surprised that uh, Tubbs is as smart as he is, but for how long? Yeah, well, Tubbs has had a little bit of success with the jab, a very, very smart jab. He's pulling his head out of distance, and uh, he's using his reach advantage. Uh, we haven't really seen Tyson. As I say, this is about as quiet as we've seen Tyson start, but uh, that, I know that won't last long. He's working well inside. If you remember early on, Tyson's in, in fighting wasn't considered that great, but he's looking good doing that. He, watch for him bringing that area, bringing the uppercut there. I was a big fan of Tubbs when he was an amateur. He was officially the world number two behind Teofilio Stevenson of Cuba. And it was just a pity that uh, he finished up with, well, almost the contours of a channel swimmer in recent years. But uh, he appears to have buckled down quite a bit now, anyway. He's so now he's going to use that 22 pounds advantage, Jim, isn't he, laying on a bit like that. Yeah, but I thought he, he was doing better at long range. He was making Tyson miss, and his own left hands were pretty accurate. Quit, quit. 
see Tyson this the destroyer has got to work on this fellow all the time because it may not be one punch that would do it as he, as he did when he turned Larry Holmes over the one punch started the sort of landslide oh what's that good left hand punch right through Tyson's guard that went he's getting some he's getting shot his body's broken up on him Jim and it's just as well he missed him with that one it was amazing we saw, we saw it happening but it still came as a surprise there was a big duel what happened there Jim there was a punch inside Reggie which shook him up badly but didn't seem to have an effect but then as the referee broke them up, he keeled over, his legs had gone. It was a short little punch inside, a tremendous little punch. Hopefully we'll see it on replay. But uh, it didn't have an instant effect, but boy, it was a cracker. Yeah, what's his whole body breaking up there? Uh, and it really, you really thought, well, he's, he's going to totter a bit, but he'll be okay. I mean, remember this, he's only ever taken one brief count in his life early on and got up to win tubs. But when this fellow hits them, they stay hit, there's no doubt about it, in the second round. And the doctors are saying, you stay there until we tell you to get up. Uh, and if it was body punches, Jim, then uh, it, he'll be okay. No, it was a head punch. There was, there was a cracking little hook landed as they were up close. And when the referee pushed them apart, you could see Tubbs' legs had gone. I see there's blood coming from his right eye as well at the moment. But uh, as, as the referee broke them up, you could see his legs weren't working properly. Now, Ooh. let's have another look at that now. As it, he had his back to our commentary position there. That was the left hook then that started the roll. And that was when he couldn't control his legs there. We thought it was a body punch at first. But what a punch that must have been to knock that big man over. See, I think actually there was a punch before that actually happened. There was a punch when they were inside. See, they, they, that, that one's shaking them badly. Just as well, that one, this, it would have torn his head from his shoulders. And here's another angle of it, Jim. As you say, the body punch had already come in before this, hadn't it? I mean, he really did lose total control there, as if he was walking on cotton wool. Well, obvious recovery there, but nobody's more surprised uh, than him. Uh, and I think the crowd, the way he went, as you say, he also got cut in that... Uh, exchange of well not exchange i mean your fusillade of punches that uh, tyson coming in and it's quite badly cut too so now they're trying to well not clear the ring but get into an interview situation with uh, my colleague there larry merchant is uh, trying to get the champ tony tubbs went right at you and tested you and you were a little bit too strong for him but he was effective until you hurt him well he was effective because I planned that way. I was looking for the opening, but I planned for him to run. And then when I saw he, he came such an easy target to hit, I was just planning and planning. And he had his hand, hands up very high. I was surprised that he had his hands up so high. And so I started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle. And then as soon as he brought his hands up, I saw his eyes and I aimed right for his eyes. He said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few b blows there. Did he hurt you at all? Not Distract at all. you even? Not at all. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. You get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in and get my hands on my opponent. Okay. When he didn't come out moving and jabbing and doing those kind of things, what was your first thought about well, that? Well, I said, well, this is going to be a complicated fight. It's going to be a fight. He came to fight. And, you know, and I was, I, for the last moment, I prepared for him to just come out swinging because Kevin said he's going to come out and try to rough you. Did he at all try to rough you up? Absolutely. I, I, felt, I felt the tip of his um, glove around my eye. I don't know if it was the thumb, but in fighting, you're in a hurt business. You can't complain. When you see a man come out and he's obviously that out of shape and heavy, does that lull you in any way in the first round? Not at all, not at all. That was his prerogative to come out the way he did. My job is to finish him off. You see, someone if he would have went 10 rounds, 6 rounds, 7 rounds, then someone could say something critical towards my performance. But he came out, he came in, he, was a, he came out a tough performance. He didn't come like a guy that just came to pick up a payday. He got hit with a solid shot. It looked like it was above the eye, but I tried hitting exactly in the eye. And... 
he took a, a great shot and he went down. But if he, if he were the last six or seven rounds and he was out of shape, then you could criticize me. But he came to fight, and if anybody could criticize that he was out of shape, I did what's supposed to have been done to a person that was out of shape. I got rid of him quick. Well, not the kind of performance that we've come to expect from Mike Tyson, but certainly he's as deadly as ever. Jim? Well, I think that was the most controlled performance I've seen from Mike Tyson. Usually we see him come out bombing in the first round, but it was as though he knew he couldn't do that with Tubbs. Tubbs is a smart boxer, and in the first round he gave Tyson troubles. But he came out in the second round, and for some reason he went into punching range with Tyson, and instead of tying him up, he tried to punch it out with him. And just before the end came, Tyson landed a lovely short punch inside, which sent Tubbs' legs... They broke away, when they waved him back in again, I think he was already gone at that point and the finishing punch put him over. But I think uh, Tubbs must be sitting now saying, why did I move into punching range and not grab hold of him? Why did I punch it out after a successful first round? Well, Jim, thank you very much indeed. The next time that we shall see Mike Tyson in action will be towards the end of June when he takes on Michael Spinks for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Of course, Michael Spinks still thinks he is a world champion. That will resolve that issue, certainly. We'll leave you from the Big Egg here in Tokyo, the Tokyo Dome, with that final knockout. His record still unblemished. From all of us, goodbye. He's going to use that 22 pounds advantage, Jim, isn't he? Laying on a bit like that. Yeah, but I thought he, he was doing better at long range. He was making Tyson miss, and his own left hands were pretty accurate. See, Tyson, this, the destroyer, has got to work on this fellow all the time because it may not be one punch that would do it as he, as he did when he turned Larry Holmes over. The one punch started the sort of landslide. Oh, that's a good left hand punch right through Tyson's guard, that went. He's getting some, he's getting shot, his body's broken up on him, Jim. And it's just as well he missed him with that one.